Are you tired of losing money trading cryptocurrencies? Sign up for my free trading AI with over 50% monthly return on your investment. Link is in the description. In this video, we'll go over some huge news. First of all, Ripple just made a statement about a live CBDC on the Open XRP ledger. I want to explain that in this video because some members of the XRP community believe that all CBCs will be created on private chains rather than the public XRP ledger. Because this is so huge for XRP, I want to break down a brand new announcement that just came out of Ripple in this video. Moving ahead. Additionally, I want to discuss two very intriguing developments that occurred earlier today in the regulatory arena. One was a meeting with Congress about digital assets that was really intriguing. I want to explain why that was actually very encouraging before moving on to a document that Coinbase recently leaked that exposes the SEC and another significant deception. Stay around for that, please. This video is highly significant. This film will begin by covering a House congressional meeting that took place earlier today since it was really effective. And in my opinion, it produced some quite optimistic events. Now, I never imagined I'd be saying this because I've been present for so many of these meetings and nothing ever happens. It appears like this one was actually quite productive, other from flooding cryptocurrencies. And I'd want to explain why. To begin with, at least half of the speakers, possibly more, started off their remarks by tearing Gary Gensler to shreds. Even the members of this panel who are opposed to cryptocurrencies seem to be wondering what the FCC chair was up to. Now, you overheard some illiterate remarks about cryptocurrency, but nobody could figure out why the SEC wasn't effectively overseeing the market. Of course, you also had cryptocurrency enthusiasts who were really tearing Gary Gensler apart from a more technical perspective. However, it's crucial to note that almost everyone there was bitterly disappointed in Gary Gensler. Furthermore, I believe this to be of even greater significance. In fact, we witnessed Democrats criticizing Gary Gensler. Considering that parties normally stick together no matter what, even if they disagree with something happening, this represents a significant advancement. Normally, there would be a concerted effort to support the candidates that a political party had selected, but what we witnessed instead, and I must single out Richie Torres here, was a Democrat who was utterly destroying the opposition strategy. One of the harshest criticisms of the dairy deaths there came from him. And precisely that is what we must observe. We don't want cryptocurrency to turn into a politicized issue at all costs. We want to make sure that Republicans and Democrats are fighting for a robust Bitcoin market together. Therefore, it is a fantastic sign that many Democrats actually deviated from the party line and opposed Kerry. And it demonstrates that the Republicans were targeting Gary Gensler for the same reasons the Democrats were. He has done a terrible job of regulating this market. They weren't just attacking him because they were on the opposing political side of him. The fact that all sides of the political spectrum are unhappy with the way this market is controlled leads me to believe that this was actually a pretty significant step forward. And I believe it will expedite our arrival at our destination. My final and most significant takeaway from this is that I believe you oppose her really legislating herself out of the Bitcoin market. It appears that no one at this hearing still has faith in the SEC. And it seems that every single congressman there now believes that the CFTC should take over this market or that we need to create an entirely new regulator for digital assets. It appears that practically all of them have lost hope in the SEC's ability to carry out its duties in this situation. And I believe this simply gives the impression that the SEC is attacking the cryptocurrency market, not the market itself, which is really saying, oh, we don't want to be regulated. It is crucial that regulators comprehend this. And they don't believe it's simply cryptocurrency businesses who aren't showing up to register. The Congress people now understand that these cryptocurrency companies want to operate inside the law, but the SEC and Gary Gensler simply aren't allowing that to happen, in my opinion based on listening to these hearings. Overall, I consider this to be very fruitful. Furthermore, I believe it will put the SEC under a lot of pressure going forward. I'd like to move on at this point and briefly discuss something that Coinbase really leaked earlier today. Therefore, Coinbase is really retaliating against the SEC, and they are actually making their communications with the SEC public. 
It's rather shocking, really. This is an extremely important statement that will benefit the entire cryptocurrency business. But I have a feeling the only reason they're making it is because they know they'll be sued either way. It appears that the SEC recently informed Coinbase that the only digital assets on which senior SEC officials have publicly expressed an opinion are Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now, the reason this is so important is because Gary Gensler implied the other day in front of Congress that he believes Ethereum is now a security. He was directly questioned. Is it theory? He declined to respond since he didn't want to make assumptions because I'm still a security guard. Okay, we see that the SEC is actually telling Coinbase here. Hey, on Ethereum, we've already made a decision. High-ranking SEC officials discussed it with us. They also state right here that, other from Bitcoin and Ethereum, there is currently no assurance for any other digital assets. Therefore, the SEC is stating that Ethereum is now clear. It isn't secure. However, Gary Gensler recently stated, Oh, I think it is a security. Or at the very least, he avoided answering the question of whether it is or is not a security. In the end, what we can clearly see is that the SEC is unable to maintain a consistent narrative. They basically have a compulsive need to lie. The SEC changed its defense each time it found itself in a tight spot, which is exactly what happened in the latest SEC case. They would simply alter their argument and try to argue in a different approach if things weren't going well one way. As a result, the SEC continues getting themselves into situations where they can't genuinely put together a solid defense. And the reason for this is that all of their arguments are false. Now, I actually communicate with a former SEC official on Twitter quite frequently. And he usually defends the SEC. So one thing he often says to me is that I can't understand why the SEC changed its story so frequently in this case. He also claims that I don't understand how the SEC handled this case so poorly. But in the end, I am aware of the reason the SEC changed its narrative. I can now see why the SEC has argued this case so poorly so many times. The SEC entered this case with the attitude that since they were the SEC and knew they were breaking the law the entire time, we'll just make something up and make it work. The SEC attempted to navigate this entire process on their own but it is not going to work with a judge who actually understands what is going on. They are being caught in these lies as a result. They wouldn't have to falsify or alter Bill Hinman's view if they were truly following the law. Additionally, they wouldn't have to alternate between 15 different theories. They are merely attempting to make it up as they go, which is why this is happening. And if they genuinely had evidence that all of these digital assets were securities, they would lose and they wouldn't need to do any of this if they actually regulated this market properly to bring it into compliance. Hey, it's a security because of this, this, and this. Hey, we told these people back then that they should have come in to register. They can respond. And we provided them with this application so they could comply. And they never followed through. All of it didn't occur. The SEC is telling these businesses, hey, you're probably good, in its place. It's most likely not a security, but suddenly, unexpectedly, you turn around and declare. Actually, it is a security. We changed our opinion. You can now file this lawsuit. This is really embarrassing. And this is just further evidence that what has been happening all along is precisely what it is. And it's not some sort of hoax. Last but not least, I want to wrap up this video with a really exciting video that recently came out of Ripple. Darren Moore Jr. actually created this video. I frequently state this. Check them out. He's my fave XRP influencer. However, I want to show you this video since so many individuals who are not part of the XRP community claim that a CBC will never be created on the open XRP ledger. Well, it just went to show that they were mistaken. Pay attention to this and we'll dissect it. However, this is incredibly exciting. What then are we discovering? So far, two projects have been announced. Next, we have five NDA-related rows with monetary authority. The CBD in Baton is real. There is a central bank, and they have created a currency that is now progressing nicely. And the stablecoin used in Palau is the US dollar. As a result, Palau uses the US dollar despite having its own government, but no central bank. 
Therefore, we are releasing a USD stablecoin for use in this nation on the public blockchain and the public XRP ledger. That's actually extremely intriguing for innovation because it can be used for other things. On the XRP ledger, Pot Lao is issuing a $1 stablecoin. You just heard a welfare advocate talk, yet I hear some individuals trying to refute that. You just overheard him say it. What he said was that. It will be distributed via the XRP ledger. That is where. We have a CBC Live on the XRP ledger, and it is not a private version of the XRP ledger, as far as we are aware. It appears in the general ledger. This demonstrates that many CBDCs created on the XRP ledger will be on the public ledger. And all of this anxiety about personal ledgers was unfounded. The fact that there are currently five more projects under the NDA may be more interesting, though. Until the Ripple SEC issue is resolved, there may be a significant number of CBDCs waiting to be launched on the XRP ledger. Additionally, not all of them will be tiny, like Palau. Brazil and India are likely to be two of the significant ones. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. But both in Brazil and India, there are numerous XRP transactions taking place. They also occur to be Ripple partners for each other. The last thing I want to mention is that everyone claimed that the SEC would ban XRP and Ripple. Here, we can clearly see that nobody else is concerned. When Ripple prevails, this lawsuit will come to a close. There will be a huge increase in the number of institutions looking to create CBDCs once XRP has clarity. The only coin with clarity will be XRP, and Ripple will be the leader in this market. I appreciate you guys coming so much. I hope you liked watching this video. Please remember to like and subscribe if you did. At least for the time being, it truly does mean a lot.